Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be solving a simple problem in both Python and BQN from the Perl Weekly Challenge website. And it's going to highlight why I love BQN so much. So the problem we're gonna be solving is the second problem from the most recent weekly contest 235 entitled Duplicate Zeros. If we click on this, click for more details, and we scroll down to the bottom, we can read the description and look at a couple examples. So duplicate zeros is the name of the problem and it says you are given an array of integers, write a script to duplicate each occurrence of zero in the given array and shift the remaining to the right, but make sure the size of the array remains the same. So for our first example, we're given one zero two three zero four five zero. And if we look at the result, basically every single zero has been duplicated. So you have one zero here, now two, but you, perform this sort of modification while maintaining the original length of the list. So we're gonna sort of end up truncating to be equal to however many elements we started off with. One, two, three remains the same as one, two, three. In the final test case, zero, three, zero, four, five ends up with four zeros and a three in the middle. Hopefully this makes sense. Let's hop over to Python to take a look at a couple of very simple solutions that I probably would have written several years ago. So this is the first Python solution that I wrote. I am not a big fan of it, but like I said, I tried to write this code as if I was writing it several years ago when I first started to learn how to program. And basically we are just initializing a result list called res. We're looping through each of the elements in our list nums. We're appending each number regardless of the value. And then we're making a check that if the element is currently equal to zero and the length of our result list is not equal to the length of our initial nums list, then we append another value. We could have, instead of using E here, just use zero because we know it's gonna be zero at this point, but it's the same difference. And then once again, we have to do a final check to make sure that if we are uh, in the situation where we now have our both, both of our lists the same length, we have to break. I wrote a second solution, which I like a little bit better because I think it's slightly easier to read because it's more regular, but it's a little bit redundant because we have the same line twice. So basically we just have two different checks at two different points in time. If the length of the lists are the same break and in the case where you have uh, an, a zero for your element, we do a second append. This I like slightly better, but it is still irritating because we've got a lot of state that we're mutating, duplication of the same statement. However, like I said, the goal was to write this how I would have written it maybe five, 10 years ago when I was start, first starting to learn how to program. However, let us switch to BQN to show why I love BQN so much. So here we are in BQN pad, and we already have our unit test set up and the first thing we want to do is basically identify everywhere there is a zero. And we can do that with a zero equals, pretty straightforward. The next thing we want to do is we want to build a mask which has the number of times we want to copy each value. So everywhere that isn't a zero, we want it to have a value of one to just do a, a single copy. And everywhere there is a zero, we want a value of two. So in order to go from our current list of zeros and ones to that list of ones and twos, we can just add one. And now we can combine this mask with a function called replicate, which is the slash here. And if we do that, basically is going to apply a copy to each of the values for however many times the value on the left said. So everywhere there was a zero, we get two zeros now. Everywhere there was a non-zero, we just get the same value once. And once we have this, we basically just want to truncate it to have the initial length, the length of our initial list. And we can do that by first getting the length, and if we do this, it shows now the first character in this sort of nested list is the initial length. And if we combine that with a function called take, we end up with our full solution. So this is incredibly beautiful and powerful in my opinion. However, we can do better because this is the explicit form of our solution, which mentions our argument x, but we can switch this to point free form. So we will kind of build this up incrementally. So let's get rid of most of our code. And we can convert um, this, so if we put back our braces. So at this point we have our mask and we can turn this into point free by basically getting rid of our braces, our X and replacing the X with a tack. And so this basically builds up a three train which is going to evaluate zero equal to our initial argument. And then by adding these two functions, this builds a five train which is gonna do the same thing, adding one to our initial list where we are identifying where we have zeros. 
And now we want to combine this with what is called before. It is the sigma combinator. And if we do this with replicate, basically this means this is a binary function and pass our argument initially on the right and then pre-process it on the left with this function. So it gets that sort of uh, pattern of two x's now. And so at this point, we now just have a unary function that takes a single argument and we need to combine this with take and the length of our list. So we can do this with another fork. So our binary function is take. Our second unary function is going to be length. And that is our final solution. So we're making use of basically three forks. This is our first fork. This is our second fork. And the overall solution is our third fork. And we're also making use of before or the sigma combinator in Two of the cases, our fork actually doesn't correspond to a phi combinator. It corresponds to, I believe, something called the D combinator, where it's just replacing one of the unary functions with a value. And in the final case, the fork is the phi, phi combinator. So even if this didn't make 100% sense because I'm making use of a lot of combinator uh, magic here, hopefully still it highlights why BQN is so awesome. You can do these incredible composition techniques to end up with absolutely beautiful code. If you're interested, links will be down in the description below to check out BQN pad, the docs to BQN, and the Pearl Weekly Challenge website. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video.